Three, two. Humans are about to spend a lot of time in space. Liftoff. We're planning to go back to the moon to stay, right? We're going to the moon and we're setting up a science station and we're going to have people there for potentially years and years. But there's one problem. Space travel is very dangerous. There are cosmic rays that the effect on the human body is similar to radiation that they could cause cancer. That's why the Frontier Development Lab has teamed up with companies like Intel. They think artificial intelligence can help us make space a safer place for humans. Recently, we talk about potentially establishing a base in Mars in the long run. That is where you're really worried about the higher risk of cancer is because you have a transit there and back that's going to be at least three years. We got to ensure that we get there safe and healthy. This is where AI comes into the picture. AI is based on the principles of using data to find patterns. It's classified as a pattern recognition type problem. One common use of AI has been its application in healthcare. Can we build a machine learning framework that can identify the biological factors, genetics, that make one astronaut more susceptible to space radiation-induced cancer? That would assist clinicians and scientists to discover those treatments and those countermeasures for mitigating the adverse effects of space radiation. Intel is collaborating with the Frontier Development Lab to answer these questions. So there have only been 106 astronauts that have gone to space, and not all those astronauts actually had data collected from them or uniformly. And to overcome that, we need to amass data from other sources from across different populations so that we can fill in the gaps and build a more comprehensive model. The solution ended up being an AI approach called Open Federated Learning. What federated learning does is it flips the conventional way of doing deep learning training, which is to bring all of your data to a central place. The data doesn't need to be sent. It's just the model, which happens to be quite a bit smaller. And the idea of moving a model is, is much easier than moving vast amounts of patient data between centers. The immediate impact of the work was finding a new target gene, potentially, that could be implicated for its role in cancer. So far, Open federated learning appears to give humans a better shot at becoming a multiplanetary species. You don't necessarily know until you're on the other side of it where these things are going to go. That's how science is developed. You have to take small steps so that the people after you take bigger ones. But just like humanity's first trips to the moon, the technology that will help us explore space will also help us live on Earth using federated learning has the potential to be used for cancer, but also for a lot of other diseases that are out there. We can really get at some of these challenges that are central to how we find our place in our solar system and our universe, and also how we understand our own biology on Earth.